foray into a, a complete, uh, a different topic uh, from the one I was assigned. I'm assigned to talk about meat, but um, since I have so much time to speak, I'm going to take on a completely different topic, which is um, dietary advice and what can we learn from the past. So uh, 20 years ago, the, the primary dietary advice was uh, eat low fat. And this was bad advice. And w looking back, reflecting on this, uh, it occurred to me that there are really four, at least four big reasons for why that bad advice got promulgated so widely. Um, and I'll just touch on each of these. Uh, the first is groupthink. Um, I was on the Dietary Guidelines Committee for 2000, and um, full of energy back then, um, and we, we got to the fat uh, discussion, and so my colleagues all said, well, okay, 30% calories, absolute maximum, and I said, wait, where's the, where's the study? Can you point to me one human study that says that uh, exceeding 30% of calories from fat is bad? And they looked at me like I was from Mars, and they said, but all of the guidelines say this. The previous guidelines said it. Uh, the AHA said it. The ACS said it. Uh, American Cancer Society, Heart, everybody was saying that. So it obviously must be true. And I persisted and said, well, you know, do they have access to data that we don't have? Uh, and they said, okay, that's enough. We're not talking about this anymore, and uh, <laughs> moved on. Um, so uh, I think groupthink. Um, second is um, that this was based on a marker, not on clinical endpoints. And the marker was a bad marker, total cholesterol. It was maybe good for 25 years ago, 30 years ago, but it's, it's really not a good marker. Uh, and as uh, Dean Ornish and others have commented, we really need clinical uh, outcomes to make good advice, and uh, that was uh, ignored. Um, the third, uh, and probably the biggest issue, which uh, raised by uh, Frank and some others, is the desire to be simple. And even back then, the advocates of low fat were saying, well, if we advocate low fat, what the population will do is to decrease uh, saturated fat, which is really what we want them to do. But that message is too complicated for the consumer, so we'll just say eat low fat. Uh, and the desire to be simple, I think, was, was really uh, um, a big, big mistake. Uh, nutrition is, is pretty simple, but it's not that simple that you can boil it down to a three-word mantra, fat is bad. There's good fats, bad fats, good carbs, bad carbs, maybe even good vegetables and not so good vegetables. Uh, so it's good to keep it simple, but not too simple. And finally, uh, uh, I think another key uh, mistake in retrospect that uh, was um, made there was that they ignored the substitution principle that if, you're, if you have a stable weight and a stable uh, physical activity pattern, then your calories will be roughly stable. So if you eat less of one food, you're going to have to make it up somehow uh, by another food. And I think this was completely ignored and entirely predictable that uh, all these fat-free products were put on the market and they were replaced by refined carbohydrates. So uh, you know, I think we can learn from the, um, uh, from the mistakes of the past. And uh, even, even in our current thinking, uh, it's easy enough to think about replacement for nutrients, but we also have to think about that in the context of food. So people say, well, is, is butter bad? And I think the right answer to that question is compared to what? If you compare it to high trans margarine, it's good. If you compare it to olive oil, it's bad. So uh, to categorize foods as good and bad um, uh, alone, uh, for any food that's uh, providing calories, you have to think of it in terms of what uh, is replacing it. And this is a key concept. It's, it's not rocket science, but it's amazing how commonly it's ignored that people say, this is bad, this is good, good compared to what. So leads me to meat. Uh, is meat bad? Well, uh, let's see. Um, so here's the t favorite target of the, most of this group. 
Um, and uh, this is overall U.S. meat consumption in billions of pounds since uh, 1900. Um, and it's gone up from 10 billion pounds to, uh, say, 55 billion. This is, a lot of it's due to the uh, population growth. This is not per capita, it's total. But you can see uh, that this is having a huge impact uh, uh, both on health and the environment. Uh, here's the per capita data. And you can see that actually uh, beef uh, consumption per capita has started to come down uh, in the last uh, 25, 30 years. Uh, pork has stayed about uh, stable. Chicken's gone up a lot, as was shown in, a, in an earlier slide. And turkey's going up, too. Um, I'm not going to say a lot about the environmental impact. Uh, there's lots of different ways to show this, but uh, I'm, I hope by now you're completely convinced that uh, uh, red meat uh, it takes up a very large uh, footprint in terms of environmental impact compared to the alternatives. So uh, health consequences in Western countries, uh, red meat is strongly linked with increased risk of diabetes, cancer-specific death, cardiovascular-related death, and all-cause mortality. And I'll show you a few um, data slides. Uh, and this is a meta-analysis uh, by Susan Larson in, in Sweden, looking at uh, uh, studies around the world, looking at uh, 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 different categories of uh, high versus low consumption of uh, red meat, processed meat, and total meat. And don't forget, this does not take into account the substitution. This, uh, so whatever, if the people who are eating low meat, they're eating more of whatever the gamish is of their diet, which could be uh, carbohydrates, could be uh, sugar, whatever. But you can see that um, a lot of the uh, points, data points there point to increased risk in these various categories. Um, I'm going to skip these. Uh, what about change in red meat consumption? Red meat, I'm talking about um, uh, mammalian meat, so uh, beef, pork, lamb. Uh, uh, if you start low and stay low, your um, that's, that's the reference category, but if you start low and increase your red meat consumption, uh, risk uh, gets close to doubling compared to staying at low levels, and there's a graded response to change in red meat consumption and diabetes risk. Um, this is, the I think, the, the key message um, when we think about red meat, red meat instead of what? And when we replace red meat with uh, either low-fat dairy, nuts, fish, or poultry, you can see these dramatic uh, uh, reductions in total mortality, diabetes, stroke, and uh, coronary disease. So is meat bad? Well, compared to these uh, alternatives, yeah. Uh, you, could, you could do worse uh, if you had like a total trans fat diet, but, um, and you, you also need to uh, take into account the, the magnitude uh, of these uh, differences. So when you replace uh, meat with nuts, you, you see uh, a bigger impact than uh, some of the other replacement uh, potentials. Um, uh, if you, um, uh, this uh, slide shows uh, for total mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and cancer mortality, uh, uh, red meat for, uh, whole grains for red meat, you can see um, uh, moderate gains in terms of um, uh, predicted risk of these outcomes. Um, some studies in Asian countries have found no association between red meat and risk of cancer specific or all-cause mortality, and the potential explanations are uh, that overall red meat uh, uh, intake is, is a, on an absolute basis tends to be lower, and it reflects more current rather than long-term patterns of uh, diet, and it's also related to socioeconomic status, which uh, reflects um, uh, mortality experience. So the new uh, WHO classifications, uh, processed meat is carcinogenic to humans. Uh, that was considered uh, sufficient evidence, and I agree with that. Uh, probable carcinogenic uh, for uh, non-processed red meat, and I think the evidence is pretty good for that as well. So takeaway uh, messages. Um, 
No, I'll we'll go to conclusions. I'm going to be on time. Uh, dietary protein should be obtained primarily from plant sources and from fish and poultry rather than red meat. So 15 seconds to spare. Thank you. Thank you.